Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Bryant. I'm one of the worship leaders here at Victory Christian Assembly. I am so excited for what God is going to do again for this service this Sunday. I pray that each and every one of you guys have had a marvelous and a and a uh, groundbreaking week, continuing to, to seek after God, continuing to draw close to him as he draws closest to you. I just pray that everything has been working out in your favor. And so I'm excited for what God is going to do today. Make sure that you guys continue to repost, reshare, make sure that you download our Victory Christian Assembly mobile app. Continue to stay connected with us because there are a lot of amazing things happening during this time. So don't think that victory isn't still doing some stuff because a lot of things are still in the works and we are excited for the testimonies that you all will be sharing with us in the future. Amen. So right now, um, I, I had a thought about the time when I was walking my pastor's dog, Inja. And one of the things that I try to do with Inja as we go for our little walks is I try to do some running with them. Um, and so one day we were running and I realized that I'm holding the leash and he's running a bit faster than I am. And it got to the point where I'm beginning to pull Inja by his neck and making him have to compete with my pace because of the fact that I'm holding on to him. What I find is that a lot of times when it comes to us, we are being held back by certain things or certain leashes or certain boundaries where we are not able to run our full potential. And just to think, if I was to let the leash go, Inja would be able to go his full potential up the street. Now, granted, I wouldn't be able to chase him after he's gone, but he would be able to be free to go as powerful and as strong as he was deemed to be. And so what I encourage everybody to do is start to pinpoint those things that is holding you back from, from growing and being your full potential, allowing you to run this race with power, with strength, and with a victorious mind frame. There's certain things, there's certain issues, there's certain roadblocks that is getting in, into your way and allow for those things that are trying to get in your path, be moved away so that you can run your full race. And if there's somebody or something that's holding on to you, we got to declare that those enemies are gone. If not, you're always going to be running the race in which your enemy or the person who is holding you back, they're running. And so I encourage each and every one of you guys, no longer be bound, no longer be discouraged, but run your full and powerful race. Because it's, the scripture says that we press towards the mark of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. And so I encourage everybody to do the same. Amen. Amen. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to enter into our ministry time. I'm excited for what God is going to do as we welcome once again our very own praise and worship team, Alpha Praise. So everybody be blessed. Come on, everybody. Let's just worship God together right now. Thank you, God. Let's just lift up our hands, open up our hearts, and just say, God, you, Jesus, we thank you right now for this time. Glory to your name. We thank you, God, for all the things that you're doing in the lives of your children. And God, right now, we just want to sing, we give your name thank praise. And God, we bless your name. And if there's somebody out there that just needs to give God just a few seconds of praise, this is the moment right now. Lift up your hands and say, God, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the rain, in the midst of whatever is going on outside of my home, God, I give your name the praise. If you believe that, come on, everybody, sing this with us. Come on, everybody, say we. We give you praise. Come on, say, and we bless your name. And we bless your name. Everybody just say hallelujah, say it with us. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name. Come on, say hallelujah. Everybody sing what it 
you sing and and we bless your name Everybody, let's say hallelujah, the highest praise, say hallelujah, hallelujah, we bless your name. Thank you, God, thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Split the part, say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless. Thank you, thank you, praise and worship team for another great ministry. I pray that each and every one of you guys continue to receive the power of God, continuing to open up your, your hearts, open up your minds and just say, God, I praise your name. I don't know the situations that are happening in my life, but I give your name the praise. I'm, I'm a little nervous about what I see, but I give your name the praise. I'm a little hesitant and going outside at times, but I give your name the praise. I see different statistics happening, but God, I give your name the praise. Thank you, God. That is amazing to remember that, that no matter what is going on, we have to continue to give God our total praise. Amen. Well, right now what we're going to do is we're going to enter into our ministry time, which is our sermon. And it comes from our very own pastor, our bishop, our leader. So ladies and gentlemen, please get your pens and pencils out. Get your phones charged up to ready to retweet and repost all the beautiful nuggets that you are about to receive. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our very own pastor, Pastor Melvin A. Jenkins. God bless. Good morning. I want to give a special thank you for all of you all that have been so supportive. I just really feel the power of God moving through virtual victory. I am so appreciative of all that you all are doing um, to support us. Um, people are giving financially. People are sending notes of, of love and support. And I want you to know, Sister Lael and I, we, we love and appreciate every one of you. Um, it's, it's, it's sad that we're not able to get together and spend time uh, the way we always did. But let me tell you, it's just I just feel the support and the love of God's people. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. Um, the Lord spoke to me this week and talked to me about this whole pandemic and what's going on. And we've been, you know, I mean, obviously we're all isolated uh, from one another, but yet and still um, there's, I believe there's a lot of prayer going on. I believe there's a lot of, of, of seeking of the Lord, um, scripture reading, um, and just kind of virtual fellowship. It's so wonderful to, uh, to really be a part of what God is doing. And I'm excited about the word today. I want to get into the word, um, talking about, you know, the, the, the trials that we're in and all of that kind of thing and what God has for us. So I want you just to kind of sit back, relax, get your scriptures out, get your devices out, take your notes, do what it is that you do. Um, but in the meantime, text somebody, um, email somebody, write somebody, uh, share this 
on social media. Let them know victory, virtual victory is on the air, ready to go. God bless you. We're looking forward to the word today. Let's get right into it. Good morning. It's time for the word of God. How many of you are ready for, to hear the word of God? Scripture says to us that man shall not live, woman shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's time for the word of God today. And the Lord has given me something that I think is appropriate. It uh, matches up with what's going on in our lives right now. Turn with me, if you will, into the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, just one verse today, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The Bible says to us, no temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man. But God is faithful and will, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So we want to use as a subject considering that scripture today, it's time to escape. This is important particularly in these tough times that we're living in right now, these challenging times, it's important for us to understand that it's time to escape. Turn to somebody and tell them, neighbor, it's time to escape. It's time to escape. All the years that I've been reading that particular passage, I've always kind of looked at the fact that God says to us, he's never gonna put more on us than we can bear. And that's, that's important and that's significant. And that's very uh, powerful for us to live by. Just like the engineer knows how much, many cars can go over the bridge, how much weight the bridge can, can, can withstand before it comes to a place of collapse, because the engineer designed the bridge. Likewise, God says, I made you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, because of the fact that I made my people, I know exactly how much weight they can withstand. And so he says to us here uh, that he's never going to tempt us above what we're able. He's never going to test us beyond what we're able to bear. And so he's not going to put more on us than we can actually handle. And that's, um, that's a place of peace. That's a place of rest. That's a place of comfort. Sometimes it feels like we're close to where we can, you know, we're not going to be able to bear anymore. But the truth of the matter is, he says, he's never going to put more on us than we can bear. And I, I think all of us can say amen to that. But what I've often overlooked is the second part of that scripture, where God says to us, with the temptation, I will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, I found that most interesting because I always thought, that when he says, with the temptation, I'll make a way of escape, I always thought that when you're in a heavy trial or a heavy burden or a heavy situation, such as we are right now, God was going to somehow open up a spiritual door, a magical way to kind of slip out of it and move into another part of life. And so I'm constantly looking, and I have been up until I actually started meditating on this word, looking for, God, where, where's the escape? When, when is this going to be over? When, you know, when are we going to have learned our lesson? When, when are we going to escape from this and move into something else? But God showed me something very important, and there's a key word here that we really need to focus on to see exactly what God is saying to us. This is important. God says, I won't put more on you than you can bear. Well, that's good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But then he says, with the trial, I will give you a way of escape. Now, that's something that we need to look at closely because the key word there is with the trial. So I looked up the word with, as I always do when it comes to these kinds of things. I like to find out what the scripture is really saying. And the word with is actually defined as a primary preposition denoting union. In other words, it is in conjunction. It is, it is at the same time, it is concurrent. So what we have going on is we have a trial. We have a heavy test. We have a temptation going on in our lives. And then God says, with that trial, I'll give you a way of escape. And I always thought that the escape was from the trial. But God says, I will not give you the escape from the trial. I'll give you the escape with the trial or within the trial. And so this has to be really taken apart and looked at carefully to figure out what God is exactly trying to say to us. Let me tell you something. 
It is not so much when I look at the, the, the burdens and the weights that we carry, there's always something going on. And God says, listen, I'm not constantly giving you trap doors to get out of situations, although God does deliver us from time to time. What I really want you to learn is how to transform your mind in the midst of it. The Bible says to us in Romans, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So God says, I put you in a trial. It's not more than you can handle, but I put you, I allow the trial to occur. But let me tell you, in the midst of the trial occurring, I'm not saying that I want to change your circumstances immediately. What I want to change is how your mind functions in those circumstances. The escape is in the midst of the trial. The escape is a spiritual escape. You can endure it because God says you can endure it. You can endure it because God says, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. In the middle of the worst trial you can think of, in the middle of the pandemic, God's children need to be focused on the fact that God is here and we are in the midst of focusing on God even though the trial is going on all around us. So what is this escape? What is the escape? The escape is not the trap door out of the trial. The escape is the spiritual place within the trial wherein we are focused on God. Our attention is on God. Our focus is on God. Our minds are on God. Our words are on God. Everything is about what Jesus is doing in our lives. I don't care what the world says. The old folks used to say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. And so I'm saying to us, in the midst of this trial, in the midst of this pandemic, focus your mind on God. Lift your brain above where what's going on on television and what you hear from all the medical experts and all these kinds of things. And know this, that God said, I'm a doctor that never lost a patient. God said, by my stripes, you are healed. God said, I will protect you. I will, my arms are all about you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. These are the things that we need to focus on. That's our escape. Our escape is in God and God is here. Therefore, it's time to escape right now. I challenge us, focus our attention on God. Don't worry about what's going on around us. Take no thought for your life, Jesus says, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall put on. But the word of God lets us know that God is here. His angels and camp around and about us, protecting us from every hurt, harm, and danger. And God said, listen, I'm in the midst. Whatever's going on, I'm in the midst. Where two or three are gathered together, I'm in the midst. God bless you. It's time to escape, and let's escape right now in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It's time to pray, church. Uh, all of us have an opportunity to come to God. Um, the thing that I like about this, and I, know, I don't know about you all, but I feel closer to God than I ever have before. And maybe because I'm praying more than I ever have before, but uh, I think that at this point in time, we can actually go to God and, uh, and, and receive what he has for us. I think it's time for us all. There are various needs. All of you have needs, issues. There are concerns. Um, there are many things that are on our minds. Here's our chance to really begin to focus on what he has for us. Uh, you know, in the midst of our prayers, let's remember to pray, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so the Bible says to us in St. Mark 11, 24, what things to whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So I want those of you that have prayer requests, something specific you want God to do in your life, in your family, in your circumstance, in your finances, in your job, whatever it might be, I want you just to tell God, talk to God. I'm going to pray a general prayer. You lift your hands and you tell the Lord from your heart what it is that you want him to do for you. And let me tell you, we're going to believe God for great and mighty testimonies. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for your work that you're doing in our lives, the wonderful work that you're doing. We thank you that your spirit is here. We thank you that you're close. Your word says to us that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. We thank you, God, that in the name of Jesus, you see all the needs out here, Lord Jesus. You can look through cyberspace and see the needs of your children. You can look at our hearts. You can see what's going on. You can hear us as we speak to you today, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for meeting every individual need, blessing, Lord Jesus, releasing your people that need to be released. I thank you for financial miracles. 
I thank you for career miracles. I thank you, Lord, for physical and mental miracles. I thank you for health, deliverance, for family members, loved ones, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We just lift this nation before you, Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for a supernatural outpouring of your spirit. We just declare the power of God in Jesus' name, moving mightily. And I thank you, Lord, that we're going to hear testimonies of the great and mighty work that you're doing in our lives. We ask these and all the blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. It's offering time. Um, just like in regular church, it's virtual offering time. So we thank God for all of you that have given. I, I, I have to give a shout out again every week. God blesses us. There are more alumni that are joining us than ever before. We so appreciate our alumni. My wife and I used to always joke that uh, if everyone that ever came to Victory came to Victory uh, at one time, we'd have a mega church. And so I thank you that we have a mega church. We have a virtual mega church. And I thank you for all of our alumni that have given so much. And I also thank you for all of our locals. All of the local homies that have given and been so faithful in their giving, uh, it has been a blessing to us. We're able to obviously um, keep all of our bills uh, covered. We don't have to worry about anything like that because of your generosity in the tithes and offering. We ask you to continue to let the Lord bless you and use you to do this. Um, and, and I pray a special blessing over everyone that does give. Uh, in a moment, Elder Mark's going to give us uh, directions on exactly how to do it. But I want you to know, um, again, uh, feel free to give as God has given to you. We have many ways that you can do that. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this time of giving. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver. Multiply the seed and the fruit and give back to your children 30, 60, 100 fold in Jesus name. Amen. If you'd like to give electronically to Victory, you can do so by, on your device, navigating to myvictory.org, tapping on the icon for menus, choosing the menu item for giving, and there you'll see our Easy Tithe Giving Portal. Tap on the button at the bottom for giving using Easy Tithe, and it takes you to a web-based version. From there, you'll see the Give Now tab, and you can use the drop-down menu to choose the fund that you'd like to contribute to, and then plug in the amount. As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or the Android platforms. We just want to encourage everybody out there to know that there is no turning back. Come on, everybody. Sing with us. There's no. There is no turning back. Turning back. Come on, say there's no. There is no. There's no turning back. Turning back. Come on, everybody. Say no matter the storms. No matter the storms in my life. No matter the rain. No matter the rain. Just believe in your heart and say there's no. There is no turning back. There's no turning back. There is no oh, 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 turning back. I just want to encourage you guys out there. The song just says that there have been times in my life when it seems all my hope, my hope was gone. Yes, it was. Thank Brian. Oh, but the Lord, He saved me, He changed me, and He set me all free. Right now. In my weakest hour, God yeah. came and made me strong. For I know that when I look back at His faithfulness, I'm encouraged. I'm so encouraged to say, thank you, God, that I'll give Him my best, no matter the test, because I made up in my mind there is no turning back. Sopranos, let me hear you say. I won't turn back. No. Woo. Woo. I won't turn back. No. Come on. I won't turn back. No. Y'all gotta put your hands I together. Come on, back. come on, come on, come on, no. everybody. Come on. I won't turn back. No. Woo. I won't turn back. No. Say. I won't turn back. No. No, my Sopranos out there. I need to hear. Back. I need to hear. Come no. on, say, I won't turn back.
the moves. Come on. Come on. One more time. One more time. Let me hear you say, yeah. Woo! On my own, so say, I made a promise. I made a promise to Where's the my Lord. Alto say? Come on, I'll tell you. I gotta hear you. I gotta hear you. No, Put your face together like this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All my outros, let me hear you, let me hear you, let me hear you. Yeah. Come on, record yourself, record yourself and let them know. I won't turn back because I made a promise. Say it. I made a promise to the Lord. One more time, say altos. I made a promise that I won't turn back. No, no. Come on, to this, let me hear you say. I go all the way, each and every day, each and every day. Sing I go all the way. in-person meetings at the church as we comply with guidance from the CDC to shelter and home. You can stay in touch with Victory in a number of ways electronically. Visit our website, myvictory.org. There you can find out more about us and check out our blog. Follow us on social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. You can also download our app for your mobile device on either the iOS or Android platforms. There you can view the latest sermons, check out music and ministries, post a prayer request, and visit our chat room. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today. Have a great week, and in all you do, we pray that you walk in the victory God has designed for you. Be blessed, and see you next week.